Let's rant! So as it's clear on my channel, I haven't picked up Final Fantasy XV in a long time, as it's been over a year since the last time I had given the game any time at all. Why is that? Well, as I've stated in the past, the milking of the game itself. This is the only Final Fantasy mainline game to have nothing even close of a self-contained story, and above all, a very inconclusive one, all thanks to so much content missing from the release, and even still. When the game first released, yes, it was structurally sound, but that doesn't excuse the amount of story that was missing, along with even gameplay components missing until a later date. You can tell this game was rushed, and I don't direct any of my frustration towards the dev team, as I believe it's the company Square Enix itself that is to blame. You see, for as much as I love the company and the many games they have made and made well over the years, they have been gun-ho quite a few times in the past. If it's the mobile game that was originally a paid game, having the lowest of the low pay-to-win, free-to-play bullshit that is infamously known as All the Bravest, it's milking Final Fantasy VII or even XIII. But for the two mainline titles they tried to milk the popularity of, they still had complete self-contained stories. You don't have to play Crisis Core or even watch Advent Children in order to understand Final Fantasy VII and its story the original PlayStation 1 RPG gave you. And for as much as 13 was indeed milked by the company, it was still a complete self-contained story in the original game, with 13 2 and beyond being possible only because they rewrote the ending of the original game. But what do you have to do to follow Final Fantasy XV? <sighs> Get ready for a doozy here. You have to watch the movie Kingsglaive. You watch the free anime Brotherhood play the retro-esque beat-em-up called A King's Tale. Play the game itself, investing in episodes Gladiolus, Ignis, Prompto, and Arden in order to get more story beats on top of the heavily rushed multiplayer expansion called Comrades, and even the Royal Edition upgrade that gives you the actual fucking ending, I shit you not. And to top it all off, now you have to soon buy a fucking novel in order to finally finish the story of 15 itself. What the fuck? I pre-ordered this game in good faith that Square Enix would deliver a good story and a fun action JRPG, but it was beyond rushed. It's more insulting when they sell out so hard by giving you the only free DLC as a carnival you benefit from having the season pass for to begin with, on top of a festival being purely here to promote a Ubisoft greed fest of a game, Assassin's Creed Origins. They have sh been shameless in game advertisement via product placement. Did you know Nox camping gear can be bought in real life? It's fucking Coleman camping gear brand. Or how about the car advertisement in Kingsglaive? Maybe the fact that American Express cards are openly accepted in the world of Eos and the Kingdom of Lucis. Are they saying the places America are Lucis? Make up your mind square! Or the cherry on top of the glorified outlook on MSG filled cup noodles with a food cart and a fucking quest centered around the redneck's favorite <laughs> ramen. It's. I mean, it's downright selling out to go out of their way to do all of that alone. Then you combine the fact that they still can't keep the damn story in one place, and you feel like you're going fucking mad! I don't have to play 13.2 and Lightning Returns in order to understand the self-contained story of 13 itself. I don't have to play Dirge of Cerberus if I'm not interested in it for the sake of Final Fantasy VII. I don't have to play Revenant Wings in order to understand the story and world of Final Fantasy XII even. The beauty of the mainline Final Fantasy games is that you can choose any that speaks to you and you alone. If you don't like the mechanic setting or even story of one game, then you can easily look and see if another fits your tastes. You don't have to play the first game, then follow up in numbered order. You can start anywhere. You don't need to play the MMOs if they aren't your thing. You don't need to play 9 and everything before to play 10, 12, and 13. It's what makes Final Fantasy accessible for the general gamer. Kingdom Hearts itself can even handle a story that is happening across games, 
but it's not like he'll be sitting at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 just to feel like story elements may be missing. Sure, it may be leading into a new game with the epilogue and secret movie cutscenes respectively, but it's not like you're missing some super important story details on the villain, the lore, or anything like that. In Final Fantasy XV, base XV mind you, if you get to the El Tisha incident and go from there, it feels like a huge contrast to the open world nature of the rest of the game that just flew by on top of the final dungeon feeling so small, cramped, and just lackluster. I can prove that most of what was in DLC was originally planned to be in the game itself. From the original footage from when it was just Versus 13 to when it changed the name and went onto PlayStation 4 and Xbox One hardware. Such examples are an actual well-drawn-out and designed Insomnia dungeon that we later on got held hostage on us via the Royal Edition upgrade for $15. That doesn't include the DLC from the first season pass, by the way. Trust me, the fact that it's the first season pass makes all the difference, guys. But for real, there was still plenty missing. Not only was the dungeon originally supposed to be there, but so was the mechanic of switching between party members in battle. That was a mechanic that was shown off all the way back when it was a PS3 game under Tetsuya Nomura. And I don't blame him either for how this turned out. If anything, I can tell he wanted to bring his vision around for people to play, and still do with pot shots being taken on 15 and its distaste with fans like me, by mentioning how he dislikes the business practice of season passes and the like, on top of his Verum Rex game inside Kingdom Hearts 3's toy box world. I do wish that we had Versus 13 instead at this point. I believe that Nomura wouldn't have annoyingly spread out the story beats important to the main game itself, stuck in different mediums altogether. We haven't had to, as Kingdom Hearts fans, go out of our way to read a fucking book in order to find out the last few pieces of info, and thankfully that won't ever become the case. But in the end, it's a fucking downright shame. Fifteen didn't need to do all this. As long as they did still hold off, could we have waited even longer if that happened? Well, yeah. You probably would have waited longer if they prolonged the game. But it would have been better than having to watch a movie, mini anime, play a side game, get the main game, and get tons of DLC with a book ending it all off. It's tiring. If this sounds even remotely interesting to you, you're lying to yourself. It's unintuitive to go out of your way all to understand one game's story this damn hard. If I still had stuck with this game and paid for all the extra content in order to have had the full experience, I would have paid $100 for the pre-order that gave me the movie and a King's Tale, then $25 for the first season pass, another $15 for Royal Edition's upgrade, another $10 for Episode Arden, and an extra about $30 for the novel. That's $180 United States dollars for just one damn game! Compare that to Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Age on PS4 for $20, and it's clearly just done to milk fans. If you claim that I'm not wanting to read and that's why I'm pissed at the joke of a novel, firstly you're bullshitting yourself as a shield defending corporate greed, and secondly I have read plenty of books and enjoyed them. If this was supplemental material, to a complete self-contained story and world, I would have probably not been as hard on it, and maybe even interested. But I'm not. It's a fucking joke. I mean, Dissidia NT is in the same boat, but instead being an embarrassment of a quote-unquote game that tried too damn hard to be an esports game and looking completely undercooked next to two PSP entries that easily offers more and is more engaging. I'd even argue that the PSP entries would do a better job at attracting an esports scene than the excuse of a fighter, so to speak. This should be a message to Square Enix from a longtime fan. Don't take us for granted. Don't treat us as pay pigs to feed your greed. And treat our investments like they fucking matter. Tabata himself left Square not long after Royal Edition released and I can probably guess why he set off to do his own company, 
and it's not like I don't think he isn't able to deliver on a good experience. For as much as you don't have to play it, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII is a testament to how talented that director is. But thanks to corporate greed, it wasn't able to be realized quite as easily with 15. It was Square's fault for staggering 15 or formerly versus 13 in development when they pulled staff from it to help finish 13 itself at the time, on top of the scrutinization of the 13 brand. It is this company's fault not many people are happy with this game and will not be so forgiving. Remember a game called King's Night Square? That shoot 'em up with RPG elements that pushed you guys to make Final Fantasy as your final attempt at a game development studio? You pushed it back to the forefront shamelessly in 15 itself by essentially going out of your very way to advertise another mobile game. A mobile game that was an adaptation of your failed NES quote unquote classic as you guys probably think it is currently. And if you continue down this path, ruining what saved your asses back then, I'd hate to see you go and have nothing but this as your legacy you left behind. You may have great games in the past, but that won't allow you to mistreat the fans that have supported you for years. If there is anything that I can say to Square Enix right now from the bottom of my heart, it is that you guys need to really go back and rediscover what got you the success that you did in the first place. Not so much for the specific universe, the specific game, but the talent, the passion behind it. Go back and rediscover that. And maybe Final Fantasy 16 will actually be alright. I'd like for that to be the case. I'd like to invest in a Final Fantasy game and not feel gypped for it. I'd like to have d invested in Dissidia NT and have not felt gypped in it. But here we are. I really, really hope that you guys actually try and pull your shit together. Because I'd hate for you guys to actually disappear like this. Especially after Kingdom Hearts 3 did so well.